Hey guys, uh, today's video will be uh, my first book review on this channel. And this will be for Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. This is the fourth book in the Stormlight Archive series, and it is one of my uh, one of my most anticipated book of the of the year. Uh, the the other one is the Time of Courage by John Green, which I've read also. Uh, now that I've read Rhythm of War, I think this is another scintillating masterpiece in the Stormlight Archive series. But it is by all means not flawless. I will be talking about them later. As some of you probably know already that the Stormlight Archive is one of my top favorite series of all time. And if you've seen my previous video, it is my utmost favorite ongoing series. I truly believe that the Stormlight Archive will continue to be one of the most important series in epic fantasy. It's been three years since the previous book, uh, Oddbringer, was released. And there is no sign whatsoever of Sanderson's fame or name uh, disappearing into oblivion. It's the other way around, actually. Somehow, even though there isn't any Cosmere novels being published in the past three years, oh yes, the Cosmere drought has been incredibly painful to me, but somehow Sanderson's name just continues to get more and more popular now. He is one of the most prolific authors in the genre right now, and now read him of war at 458,000 words, the biggest book in the Stormlight Archive and the biggest book that Sanderson, Sanderson has ever wrote so far, is finally here, and I've read it and I loved it so much. But the most important questions that you have to ask about Rhythm of War isn't, isn't the exact word count, right? That's probably not the thing that you want to know, but whether this live up to the ginormous expectations set by his readers or not. I personally think that it doesn't meet the expectation, it surpassed it. Three of my co-bloggers who finished this book within three and four days called it uh, their number one favorite book of all time. Number one favorite book of all time. I personally disagree with that because I think Words of Radiance is superior and I couldn't choose just one favorite book of all time. I couldn't do it. Do not expect me making a list where I choose my number one favorite book. That is not happening. But there is one thing that I, de I definitely agree with them is that Rhythm of War is another masterpiece and I would give it 6 out of 5 stars if I could. And who knows, maybe in the future a uh, reread of this book, Rhythm of War might end up becoming my favorite book in the series. We'll see. Let's start the review. Uh, this is a spoiler-free review, and but there is a lot to unpack here. If you have read this book, you will understand why, because there's so much content to divulge here. For the first time ever in the series, instead of continuing seamlessly from where the previous book left off, there is a time jump between Oddbringer and Rhythm of War in the storyline. There is a one-year time jump. This is the first time it happened, but in a similar fashion to the previous three books, we start the story with the assassination of King Gavilar once again. And I think it's truly impressive how this is the fourth time now we're seeing this event being told from a different point of view. This time it's from Navani, and somehow, there is still so much surprises and revelations just from this prologue alone. And after this prologue, we're immediately plunged into part one of the book. And this is, in my opinion, the best part one of the entire series so far. It begins with a sander lunch immediately that lasted for about 100 pages long. Just within the first 20% of the book, Sanderson has started moving the pieces of his stories incredibly well. And a heartbreaking scenes have occurred, revelations have happened, the development in the power of the Night Radiance have been demonstrated immediately and effectively. And most importantly, I was already so emotional. <laughs> I am that attached to the characters of the series, not just the main characters, but the side characters too. Bridge 4 is one of my favorite group of characters in all of fiction. The strongly evident themes of the series like family, conviction, faith, uh, friendship, uh, honor, loyalty, once again made a return and they effectively pierced through my feelings for the entire tome. But before I get to why Rhythm of War is such a masterpiece again, I want to get my small grievance out of the way first. As I mentioned, this isn't a perfect book, not at all. If you follow me on Twitter or Mike Books Review on Twitter, then you probably have seen me talk about this on his thread that I think part 3 of Rhythm of War was the first time ever in the series that I felt like I have to push myself to continue reading. I mean, it was still good. Stormlight Archive is always good to me, but I've, I definitely felt like it was a slog and could have definitely been shortened. Plus, I really don't like Van Lee's flashback chapters. Unlike the previous three books, Van Lee's flashback chapter started at part 3 instead of part 1. But I think uh, this is for better because uh, prob probably, probably Sanderson himself know that Van Lee is much uh, less interesting compared to Kaladin, Shalan, or Dalinar. And to be fair, it is difficult to write uh, better flashback chapters compared to the previous three books. 
But yeah, uh, part 3 and Venli's chapters were a struggle for me. Uh, but fortunately, these are the only parts that really didn't click for me. Part 1, part 2, part 4, and part 5 were completely awesome. They completely overwhelmed the minor grievance that I had with the book. Sanderson showcases why he's one of the best storytellers in the genre in these four parts. The revelations that he provided in this book were just mind-blowing to me. This ridiculously high level of plotting can only be executed by an author that, in my opinion, truly understands his characters, his worlds, and his storyline, all of them. And not just for this series, especially if you're caught up with all the Cosmere books, but more on this later. The burst of mind-blowing revelations that I got from part 4 and part 5 of the book and the rewarding feeling I get from reading about them were just unforgettable. This exhilarating consistency of high-quality storytelling that Sanderson constantly achieved has been proven with temerity here. And how? Well, simple through his characters and his world building. I personally found the characters in Stormlight Archive, many of them to be very inspiring. Here's the thing, the Stormlight Archive is one of the biggest and complex epic fantasy series out there. Considering that each book keeps on getting bigger and bigger, the details and the complexity of the world building also increase, and I believe that by the end of this series, which is still a pretty long time, this series will probably be the biggest series of all time. However, at its core, what drives this series uh, up to everyone's fanaticism towards Sanderson and Stormlight Archive isn't his prose, but I think it is his characters. At the end of the day, it is always his characters. Ever since I finished The Words of Radiance uh, four years ago, I already called Kaladin Stormblast one of my favorite characters of all time. And this isn't applicable only to uh, fantasy novels or novels in general, but out of all medium of uh, storytelling that I've ever experienced. And Rhythm of War just strengthened that notion even further. For the last decade, we've known uh, Kaladin to be heavily afflicted with depression and PTSD. And I think it's truly astounding how despite that, he just continued to fight and fight for the people that he loved. And yes, we have seen him suffer for the past three books, but I think the mental torture that he has to endure here were just beyond insane. And yet, he still continues to fight and have the best as he can. Whether he succeeds or not, you have to read it for yourself. But his feelings and his pain felt raw to me and I am truly, truly amazed by his journey and character's development throughout the series so far. From my perspective, he has become a real friend, real person that I come to understand. Also, on the topic of Kaladin, I would like to talk about one thing. I have seen several people uh, calling Kaladin struggling to depression as being pathetic. Mm, I think that's too harsh. If you're watching this, I hope that maybe you can be more compassionate. I myself too have to learn from this. But depression is more pervasive in our society, especially this year, as we all probably know already now. And I'm not saying that you have to like Kaladin, you can dislike him. But if you already know that he has depression, it, this is a quite a common information. Uh, and yet you still call him pathetic for struggling through his depression. I sincerely hope you don't treat real individuals that way. Depression is a real issue, and I think we can learn to be more compassionate. If you want to read about main characters who are fearless and good at everything, uh, here's flash news. You're not getting one from the Stormlight Archive. They, uh, almost all of the characters are broken heroes who are flawed and immensely, to me, relatable. I hope Kaladin's story and the relationship he has nurtured with Syl and Bridge 4 will inspire us to be more empathetic. And this display of magnificent characterization and superb development aren't applicable only to Kaladin. I think the biggest surprise for me in this book is how much I grew to love Shalan and Adeline's storyline. For those of you who don't know, I have kind of mixed feeling with Shalan. In the first book, I like Shalan's story. In the second book, I love Shalan's story. In the third book, I, I immensely dislike the way she treated Kaladin. It actually infuriated me. But in the fourth book, I think I, have, I might have underestimated the mental trauma that she had to deal with, and I totally love the development that's been done towards her character. Thoroughly impressed and hooked by her storyline. And this is a good thing because I didn't want to dislike her and now that I don't, I found myself in a good mood, in a better mood now. The character development that's unveiled through uh, Shalan's ability were stunningly good. And then there's also Adeline positivity, optimism, and kindness that are just purely precious. And this doesn't mean that he's a weak character, not at all. His kindness doesn't mean he's not willing to do hard things. 
if you have read Wars of Radiance and Oldbringer, then you will know already that he's willing to do them if it's the right course of action. I absolutely love Shalan and Adeline's storyline and I think uh, they have some of the most tension-packed chapters of the entire book. And I'm so grateful that the almost love triangle that almost happened in the previous book has been completely thrown away. I'm truly, truly grateful for that. This series doesn't need another love triangle. Then there's also Navani's impressive character development. I feel like this is more of her book uh, rather than Venli or Ashenai. I actually want more of her flashback. It was super intriguing to me to see her inspect and do research on Fabriel and Sprens. And one more thing, uh, there, is a, there is a character called Raboniel here. I think Raboniel is Sanderson's most well-written antagonist so far. The dynamic and the chemistry of the interaction between Navani and Raboniel in their pursuit of science and knowledge just felt genuine and human to me. I could talk and discuss about all of these characters and why they're so good for far longer if I wanted to, but I think I'm gonna stop talking about the characters now. This review has been long enough already, and there's still a few things I want to talk about. But yeah, my investment in the characters keeps on growing with each passing book, and even the smallest of interactions sometimes can bring out huge emotions in me. It's quite crazy thinking about it that only a year and a half has actually passed in the present time frame since uh, the Way of Kings began. But a myriad of crucial events have happened to these characters, and the level of character development that have been done to them have been immeasurable. And the poignant impact exhibited in the final center lens of this book were just uh, nothing short of meteoric. Amazing, amazing stuff really. Every time I finish a book in the Stormlight Archive, I, al I always feel like my mood has been lifted up. After all, if these damaged and broken characters can stand up and fight in circumstances much worse than me, then I should be able to do the same thing in a, re in a relatively uh, easier world. It's still harsh, of course, and it's easier said than done, but it's always possible and it's invigorating to be reminded of that. And now let's talk about the world building. I love what Sanderson has done with Roshar and the Cosmere. And Rhythm of Warp has pretty much proved that uh, it has become quite a necessity to be reading um, Cosmere novels. Roshar, The Radiance, The Fuse, Spren, Shadesmar, we learn so much more about them. I am just genuinely amazed by Shadesmar. In the previous book, uh, the Shadesmar felt like this setting that's so gloomy and dark, but in Rhythm of War, as you can probably guess from the cover art done by Michael Whelan, uh, Michael Whelan, uh, Sanderson displayed that Shadesmar can be a beautiful and majestic place. And another thing that I truly appreciate from the world building in this book is the blend of fantasy and technology. I've heard from several fantasy readers who are fixed on the idea that technology shouldn't exist uh, in a high fantasy book, or sometimes that magic shouldn't have rules. This is up to them, of course, and I personally don't think there's anything wrong with it. I love both kind of, uh, I love both kind of fantasy books. Like the first law doesn't have rules with their magic, but Sanderson have rules with their magic. And I love them both. I love them both so much. It's up to each reader, of course, but personally speaking, I found this to be limiting uh, the potential of fantasy. Fantasy is a genre that's brimming with limitless potential, and as long as it's done believably and fitting to the narrative, uh, combining magic and science and technology together into a single high fantasy book or epic fantasy book, can conjure exceptional results, and this is proven here. Sanderson's world building has always been perpetually outstanding, and I think he has truly outdone himself here. Even from his high standards, I still think that uh, if you have read uh, every book in the Cosmere, what he's done here is just insane. Almost the entire book takes place on its own two settings, uh, Uritiru and Shetsmar. But do not let this fool you into thinking that there isn't a lot of uh, revelation of information to learn here. A lot is actually an understatement. There's just so much content to unpack, and it's, I think it's impossible to do in a single review. For the past four years, a lot of people have asked me, uh, Hey Patrick, uh, do you think I should read uh, other Cosmere books before I read the Stormlight Archive? I usually replied with, mm, You can just read Warbreaker before you start War uh, Words of Radiance or Oldbringer. But now, I think uh, that's not possible anymore. It's better if you read Mistborn also, or even better, you read all books in the Cosmere. This is inevitable. I mean, Sanderson's vision of Cosmere will pretty much result with huge connection across his Cosmere series. And this is where it starts to really, really happen. Sanderson isn't just a world builder, he's a universe builder. And the Cosmere is his ultimate playground. Seriously, some of the most shocking events in this book were intensely exalting to me only because I've read every book in Cosmere, and I hope you get to experience that as well. I, I wish I can talk about this with you, but 
yeah, if you have read this book and understand what I'm talking about, feel free to comment. I will be uh, I will be more than happy to talk about them with you. But please do put spoiler alert, okay? One last thing before I end this review, I want to give uh, my praises to the production value of the uh, each book in the Stormlight Archive. As I mentioned in my book haul video, I don't usually read a lot from physical books now. I most of my readings are done through my ebooks or my Kindle. But I think Stormlight Archive each book in the Stormlight Archive pretty much demands me to uh, buy a physical copy. But in this particular situation, due to the pandemic, uh, book mail takes much longer to arrive now, and I couldn't wait, so I have to read through my Kindle first, and I did feel like something was missing. I usually uh, read Stormlight Archive in my physical copy, and I think the art definitely enhanced my experience. And I'm not saying that the art doesn't exist in the, uh, in the Kindle edition, but Interior artworks are much better experienced through a physical copy rather than digital. Kindle doesn't display images pretty well. I'm pretty much rambling here. The US edition cover art is done by Michael Whelan. The UK edition cover art is done by Sam Green. And then there's also gorgeous end paper art done by Magali and Carla Ortiz. They are stunning and they're only available in the US edition. And the interior artworks are done by Ben McSweeney, Isaac Stewart, Dan Dos Santos, and Kelly Harris. They are all wonderful and gorgeous. And here's, uh, for example, I'm only going to show four. This is Kalak by Magali Villeneuve. This is one of the end paper art. By the way, Magali is one of my favorite artists. And she did uh, the interior artworks for Robin Hoff's Farsi Trilogy right now. And also many more, many more books like A Song of Ice and Fire, Red Rising. I love her art so much. And then... Uh, this is Shana Rak by Carla Ortiz. Uh, she's the one who did the cover art for Rage of Dragons and Fires of Vengeance. And then this is an envoy form by Dando Santos. This is one of the interior artworks. Uh, Dando Santos is another legendary artist and one of my favorite artists. He's the one who did uh, the interior artworks for the name of the Intent Anniversary Edition and many cover arts such as Warbreaker or Patricia Briggs. Uh, Mercy Thompson. Lastly, this is an example of Dagger by Kelly Harris. Kelly Harris has done a lot of Cosmere artworks previously, and I think some of you may have seen some of her uh, artworks. So they're so gorgeous, right? There's no way I could resist not getting a physical copy. But too bad that it still hasn't arrived even even by the time of posting this video. But but I think it's always worth remembering that a lot of people played parts in uh, producing a book, not just the author. A lot of people, especially for a book as massive as Rhythm of War. Mm, so yeah, kudos to all the people involved. And yeah, time to wrap this review up following the footsteps of its predecessors. Even though it has its flaws, I still think it's another masterpiece for the Stormlight Archive series. So well done, Brandon Sanderson. All the preparation for the grand conclusion to the first sequence in the Stormlight Archive has been prepared. And I have a really, really good feeling that the fifth book will become the absolute best in the series so far. Rhythm of War and Stormlight Archive is a tremendous marvel for epic fantasy and it is a journey I'm truly truly grateful to partake in. A journey of a lifetime. And until the next book, life before death, strength before weakness, and journey before destination. And that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching my first ever book review on this channel. And if you prefer my review in written format, I have written a review and I have posted them on Goodreads and my, no and my blog novel Notions. Thank you so much for your support and I hope you have a lovely day. And let me know uh, if you have read this book and what do you think about it. Do you love it as much as I did? And what's your personal ranking for this book uh, in the series so far? Let me know. Bye!